Hello and welcome to Eight Essential Elements of Oral versus Written Communication. Here's where we're going. Explain the eight essential elements of communication. Explain how written communication is similar to oral communication and how it is different. First consideration, the source. A source creates and communicates a message. For example, Jay makes a telephone call to Heather or Jay writes an email to Heather. In both cases, Jay is the source. Receiver. A receiver receives the message from the source. In our example, Heather would listen to Jay and Heather reads Jay's email in the other context. Message. The message is the stimulus or meaning produced by the source for the receiver. So when Jay asks Heather to participate in a conference call at 315, that's an example of the message. In our other example, Jay's email asks Heather to participate in the conference call at 3.15. In both cases, the message is to participate in a conference call at 3.15. Channel. A channel is the way a message travels between source and receiver. In our first example, the channel is the telephone. In our second example, the channel is email. Feedback. Feedback is the message the receiver sends in response to the source. And in this particular example, if Heather were to say yes, that would be feedback over the telephone. In the other context, Heather would reply with an email saying yes. Environment. The environment is the physical atmosphere in which the communication occurs. For example, Heather is traveling by train on a business trip when she receives Jay's phone call. Or, Heather is at her desk when she receives Jay's email. The environment can have an impact on the meaning of the message. Context. The context involves the psychological expectations of the source and the receiver. Heather expects Jay to send an email with the call-in information for the call. Jay expects to do so and does. In our second example, Heather expects Jay to dial and connect the call. Jay expects Heather to check her email for the call-in information so that she can join the call. Interference. Also known as noise, interference is anything that blocks or distorts the communication process. In our first example, Heather calls in at 3.15, but she has missed the call because she forgot that she is in a different time zone from Jay. In the second example, Heather waits for a phone call from Jay at 3.15, but he does not call. Noise can have an impact on the meaning of the message. This is a diagram used for patients who can't speak. There are verbal and nonverbal dimensions to communication. Verbal communication involves the words you say. Nonverbal communication involves how you say them. For example, the tone of your voice, your facial expression, or your body language. So what are some key differences between oral and written communication? Written communication is far more formal, whereas oral communication is more conversational. Written communication is asynchronous, whereas oral communication has the expectation of immediate feedback. We're expected to speak near the 8th grade level and write much higher than that grade level. A recent nonpartisan study of Congress revealed that they had dropped an entire grade level 
in their speaking. You could argue this is a good or bad thing, regardless of your partisanship. Most media is designed for the 8th grade level. Remember when speaking to think small, think in words and phrases. Whenever you're writing, you tend to think in paragraphs instead of words or phrases. And whether you're speaking or you're writing, remember, everything is contextual. The situation is very important. It's important to speak in short, simple sentences, and in a business context, your goal is clear, direct communication. So to review, written communication involves the same eight basic elements as oral communication, but it is often asynchronous and more formal. 